Hi, this is Tim Erden, author of Statistics in Plain English, and in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to calculate uh, one-way ANOVA using SPSS and then how to interpret the output. So the data that we're going to use for this um, come from an example that I used in Chapter 9, um, comparing the hours of sleep per night that children of different ages get. We were specifically comparing three age groups, five-year-olds, eight-year-olds, and 12-year-olds. And there's a couple of different ways to do a one-way ANOVA in SPSS. Um, I'm going to start by showing you the compare means method. And you go to compare means and then over to one-way ANOVA. It asks, well, I'll put them back here. Uh, it asks you to select some variables from over here, which is the variable list, and we're going to make age our um, independent variable, what SPSS calls a factor, and sleep will be the dependent variable. And for options, I'm going to say that we want to see the descriptive statistics, and we want to get the test for homogeneity of variances. This is to test whether the variances among the different um, groups of the independent variable are equal uh, on the dependent variable. So we'll continue. And then for our post-hoc tests, um, I'm going to do a two-key, as that's what the post-hoc that I described in Chapter 9. Um, you can see there's a lot of different options. These are post-hoc tests to use when the variances are not equal between the independent groups on the dependent variable. And then these are all different sort of formulas for calculating um, post-hoc tests. So um, if we hit OK, what this brings up is our SPSS output and First, there's descriptive statistics, because I asked for them. And over here are the different levels of our independent variable. So there's three different groups, five-year-olds, eight-year-olds, and 12-year-olds. Here, it shows that each group has the same number of cases, five. Then we get the means, standard deviations for each group, standard errors, confidence intervals of the means, minimums and maximums. <coughs> we move down here we see our test for homogeneity of variances and that's the Levine statistic and this is that where it says sig in SPSS that often means the p-value. p-value is 0.977 that's much larger than our generally accepted p-value of 0.05 so this Levine statistic is not statistically significant that tells us that there are not differences in the variances between the independent groups on our dependent variable. So uh, in other words, um, we have homogeneity variance. So we are okay to proceed. And then down here is our ANOVA results. And what we're looking for is the between groups, um, which has two degrees of freedom because there's three different groups. K number of groups is three. K minus one is two degrees of freedom. This is error or within groups or error and that is 12 degrees of freedom. We have 15 cases total. 15 minus 3 because there's three groups gives us 12 degrees of freedom. And when we divide the mean square between groups by the mean square within groups or mean square error we get our f value and here we see that it is statistically significant. p is less than 0.05. So there is some difference between our group means. The population means are different, but we're not sure where. And so to see where the differences are, we look at our post hoc tests here. And the way that SPSS sets it up, it says, let's take one group, the five-year-olds, and compare them to the two other groups. Five-year-olds compared to eight-year-olds, not statistically significant. Five-year-olds compared to 12-year-olds, it is statistically significant. P is less than 
And then <clears throat> we know the 8 to 5 year old comparison because we saw that up there. But the 8 year old to 12 year old comparison, not statistically significant. And if you go down a little further, you see this table. And this is shows just in a glance which groups are significantly different from each other in their means. 12 year olds are not different from 8 year olds, but they are different from 5 year olds. Not sure what that click to activate was. Um, I don't want to do that. So this subset here does not include the five-year-olds. That tells you 12-year-olds and 10-year-olds um, are, are, might be different from five-year-olds. Over here, this group does not include the 12-year-olds, but it does include the eight-year-olds. So here's what we know. The population mean of five-year-olds is significantly different, higher, more hours of sleep than the population mean of 12-year-olds, but eight-year-olds do not differ from either five-year-olds or 12-year-olds in their average number of hours of sleep per night. Now, if we go down here and look at this um, box, it gives us um, what are known as homogeneous subsets. And what it does is it groups means that are not significantly different from each other together. So as you can see over here, these two group means, 8.4 and 10.0, for the 12-year-olds and the 8-year-olds are grouped together. And that tells you they're not significantly different from each other. There's no difference between those population means. Over here, we see the means for the 8-year-olds and the 5-year-olds. And... Um, those are grouped together saying that there's no significant difference between those means. So that tells us that the population means of eight-year-olds and five-year-olds are not different from each other. And as we already knew from the table above, what this table of homogeneous subsets tells us is that 12-year-olds and five-year-olds have different means, significantly different, um, different means in the amount of hours of sleep that they get per night. But eight-year-olds don't differ from either groups, either the five-year-olds or the 12-year-olds. Um, so it's just kind of another way of visualizing these data. Let's take a look at another way to calculate a one-way ANOVA, and that is um, using the univariate command. Here our dependent variable is sleep, and our fixed factors, meaning our independent variable um, with separate groups, is age. We will do the same post hoc, the Tukey post hoc test. And to get stuff like descriptive statistics, you do that in the options. I've got selected descriptive statistics, estimates of effect size, and homogeneity tests. Again, that's going to be the Levine test. So if we click OK, um, what we get as SPSS output is the um, number of cases per group and what the groups are. So those three different age groups, five-year-olds, eight-year-olds, and 12-year-olds. This table here gives us the means and standard deviations for our three different groups along with the sample sizes. Here is the Levine's test for equality of variances. And as we saw before, it is not statistically significant, meaning that the variances are equal across our three independent groups on the dependent variable. Down here, we get um, the results for the ANOVA, and um, it's a little bit different than in the previous output. Um, for one thing, we get the intercept here. Um, let me take a little bit closer look at this. Okay, so we get the intercept. And I'm going to close that, um, which we don't really care about. What we mostly care about is the effect for age. That is our independent variable. And just as we saw before, here's our degrees of freedom. Here's our degrees of freedom error or within groups, uh, our mean squares between groups and within groups or error. Our f value, divide that by that, you get the f value. 
and it is statistically significant. It's a little bit less than a 0.05 level. And then we also get this partial eta squared, and that is a measure of effect size. Um, that's the benefit of doing the one-way ANOVA this way in SPSS is it can give you the effect size measure um, that the other method of calculating the one-way ANOVA in SPSS doesn't. So that's, that's the main benefit of this method. And then the postdoc comparisons, they, it looks just the same as in the other method, um, the one-way uh, comparison of means method in SPSS of doing an ANOVA. Um, so we've already learned about that. So that's the two ways of calculating a one-way ANOVA using SPSS, and that is how you interpret the output from those two different um, analyses, SPSS ANOVA analyses. I hope that's helpful.